Gaming is a weird place, and every month, Game Ranks puts together a list of stories that remind us of just how weird. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, Weird Gaming Stories of October 2020. Starting off at number 10, stuff is getting extreme regarding the delays with Cyberpunk 2077. Now, when I say that, I don't mean they've delayed it too much. It of course has been delayed too much, but on the same token, this is maybe more extreme. You see, delaying Cyberpunk 2077 led to death threats. And like, yes, I understand, like it makes you mad that it's gonna be longer before we play this game. That is an understandable response. However, going this far and saying someone's gonna die because of the delay, I, it's, that's wrong. And that's exactly what CD Projekt Red's senior designer took to Twitter to say to folks. He said, I understand you're feeling angry, disappointed, and want to voice your opinion about it. However, sending death threats to the developers is absolutely unacceptable and just wrong. We are people just like you. And I think that's something that kind of needs to be stressed. Folks, don't do that. At number 9, a contested Donkey Kong High score holder by the name of Billy Mitchell, who has been disgraced by being accusing of cheating, where Twin Galaxies, the people who keep track of that stuff, invalidated all of Mitchell's high scores, because at least two videos that Mitchell had played on were not performed through an original arcade Donkey Kong machine. Now, as you can imagine, this has brought a lot of backlash to him for quote-unquote cheating, even though that's not necessarily what happened. The lawsuit he's filed is about attempting to prove uh, defamation which is not an easy thing to prove in court. However, a Los Angeles County judge ruled that his case has the minimal amount of merit necessary to move forward in the courts. Now, both sides in this conflict have presented conflicting evidence, of course, that's usually what happens, and the court hasn't made any motions as to exactly who they believe. So, I mean, there is a chance he may prevail over them, although uh, it's, it's really weird to see somebody just sue somebody over their high score, even though that's not really the principle at play here. It ultimately sounds a lot like that. At number eight, AMD announced the new RX 6900, which runs equivalent to the RTX 3090 in most situations, and in some actually outperforms it, and it costs $500 less. Now that is not to say it is cheap, it is coming December 8th at $999, which is, I mean, you can get a pretty decent graphics card for less than that. However, the 6900 XT in rage mode and something they're calling smart access memory. And some people aren't like super happy about it. I've seen people complain about it because it's using rage mode to achieve this, which is apparently cheating. I don't know, I don't care. I've seen some people angry about it because they don't like the fact that something that outperforms the last thing cost $500 less and they paid $500 more for a previous product, which is understandable. I get that. None of us really love paying extra money for a thing that is not as good, but ultimately that's also how technology works. And again, like it is using rage mode, which apparently is cheating. I don't know. I don't personally care a whole lot as long as the game works and looks good. And at number seven, a Dutch judge ruled in a court case that EA will be fined 500,000 euros every week until it removes loot boxes from FIFA, which let's be real is probably not enough to get rid of the loot boxes in FIFA. Now, this is where it comes up to BS in my opinion. A lot of European companies have classified loot boxes as gambling because, you know, they're gambling, period. That's what it is. However, Electronic Arts has said, Electronic Arts is deeply committed to positive play. We seek to bring choice, fairness, value, and fun to our players in all of our games. We remain open to discussions with the Netherlands Gambling Authority and other stakeholders to understand and explore solutions to express any concerns. Choice, fairness, value, and fun equals paying for a thing that you might not get anything from. Gambling. I mean, yeah, gambling can be fun, but uh, choice, fairness, value, and fun? No, mm -mm, it's not that. Number six, the director from the Resident Evil movie franchise, as well as Mila Jovovich, the actress from the Resident Evil movie franchise, are adapting Monster Hunter into a film, and the trailer came out, and I am not 100% sure what to make of it. It's not the worst looking thing. It kind of looks like they've captured like a version of what Monster Hunter could be, which might kind of work, which is 
weird, but it seems to embrace the idea, at least from the trailer, that it's very much kind of a theme park ride type movie, which fine, as long as they're not really trying to make it into something poignant and important, I think that could possibly work. And like Monster Hunter is not a franchise in a million years, I would say, oh yeah, that would work as a movie. So for me, just the possibility it could work, even if it doesn't work out, seeing that it has some degree of promise is weird. Again, we are talking about a video game movie adaption, and one that doesn't really lean too hard on the story, let's just say. I don't know, it, it could be good. I hope it's good. At number five, a couple of hackers were arrested for selling tools that crack lockdown gaming hardware, specifically the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch part is particularly relevant here because one of the guy's last names is Bowser, meaning Bowser was arrested for hacking the Switch. I don't think that I need to explain in too much detail why that is funny and kind of weird, but I'll go ahead and throw in another detail here that in my opinion makes it even funnier. His first name was Gary. Gary Bowser, the notorious hacker. <laughs> The other guy who got arrested has like a villain name. His name is Max Luarn, which sounds like a mid-tier, at least respectable Bond villain. But man, Gary Bowser. Do you think Gary has ever been bullied? Like if his name was some other first name, it would be really cool to have the last name Bowser, but Gary just deflates it so badly. Sorry to everybody named Gary out there, by the way. You weren't arrested for trying to hack the Switch with the last name Bowser, so like this isn't applicable to you. At number four, Atari is releasing a new console because why not? Uh, it's called the Atari VCS and it's kind of above and beyond what you might expect out of these retro consoles. Yes, it definitely is that. However, it's basically a PC running Linux and allowing you to do a lot more than play all of your sort of basic old console Atari games, which by the way, I want to play again on a TV easily with a console. Yes, that's great. I like that. Thanks. It's actually engineered pretty cool too. Like they made it out of ribs to evoke the ribbed look of the old Atari VCS. However, again, they obviously went a lot further with that design feature than Atari did decades ago. It's really neat. Honestly, I think that it's cool. I feel a lot like um, it doesn't really sound like a weird story up until this point. Uh, when you find out that it's list pricing at $389, which is $10 less than the cheaper PlayStation 5. Uh, might be a little bit too much for my taste. Um, does that mean it's not a great console? No, uh, but I think I may wait until they lower the price. Like it is something I want, but I don't feel like it's worth that much. And Atari clearly does, and that's weird. At number three, Call of Duty Modern Warfare ceased to fit on a single 250 gigabyte drive because of the various different modes. And people were like, ha, 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 really? Guys, we know this because people who either partition their hard drives or get externals to install large games on, particularly, generally, 250 gigabytes, because what game takes up that much space? Well, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. In fact, so many people complained about this that Activision basically was like, all right, we need to make it so we can uninstall specific modes, which is good. Like, very good. Thank you. I mean, really good on Infinity Ward for including this as an update. Like, a lot of people who are interested in the single player aren't interested in the multiplayer and vice versa. There are multiple multiplayer modes. There is one catch you cannot get rid of Warzone. Still, I mean, just the option to remove certain modes is very helpful. And number two is the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe resigned from his position because of health concerns a little over a month ago. And in the time that he's had since, he has been a little looser lipped about like certain things. For instance, if you recall the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, he was dressed as Mario. The thing that he told everybody in the last month is that he did not like doing that. He didn't want to do that. He had to be talked into it. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, known joy killer, did not want to cosplay as Mario during an event that should show pride in all of the accomplishments of his country. What worldwide accomplishment can you talk about if not Mario? Now, obviously he did do it, but still. And finally, at number one, a study was popularized 
which didn't come out in October per se. However, it was highlighted significantly as it received much larger circulation in October. It was a study called Cognitive Enhancement via Neuromodulation of Video Games, colon, Synergistic Effects? Question mark. The findings of it actually brought people to the conclusion that playing video games as a child can actually cause measurable improvements on cognitive functions that develop over the course of young adulthood. Yep. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get addicted to video games and they can cause problems in your life, both as a child and as an adult. That's not to say that that's not possible. You can get addicted to anything. You can do anything too much. There's nothing out there that isn't like that. However, playing video games for at least a few hours a week has demonstrable improvements on brain function. And that brain function is permanent. Your brain works better having to process the information required to play video games as well as handle the problem solving that video games ask you to complete. So there. So what weirdness did you experience this month? Is any of this relevant to you? Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.